Happy to go, Joe? Yep, great. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, thank you for being here today. I'd just like to take a moment uh, to express my gratitude for the opportunity to meet on the treaty lands of the Mississaugas, the Credit First Nation, uh, to reaffirm the Ontario Green Party's commitment to the truth and reconciliation process, and to just extend um, my heartfelt sadness to the people in Kenora in the discoveries of the residential school there, and just the fact that we need the Ontario government and the federal government both to make a commitment to full funding to, dis to the discovery of unmarked graves on residential school sites. Uh, and I support the calls of Indigenous leaders uh, that uh, we all come together and that governments put forward sufficient funding uh, for these discoveries out of respect, for dignity, and for truth and reconciliation. The people of Ontario deserve to know the truth behind the Greenbelt land deals and that is why I'm so pleased that both the Integrity Commissioner and the Auditor General have agreed to conduct investigations into the Greenbelt land deals uh, that the Ford government has announced. There are serious unanswered questions about how conservative connected land speculators knew to buy certain parcels of land protected in the Greenbelt. People need to know why the Premier broke his repeated promises not to touch the Greenbelt, not to open it up for development. This whole affair does not pass the smell test. And that's exactly why we need investigations so the people of Ontario have answers. Answers to why the Ford government made these decisions and answers to the financial and environmental consequences of opening the Greenbelt for development. Especially since a whole host of experts, land experts, even the government's own hand-picked housing task force clearly have stated that land, lack of access to land, is not what's causing the housing affordability crisis that we're facing. That we do not need to open the green belt in order to solve the housing affordability crisis. And so the question remains, why did Gov Doug Ford choose to break his own promise and put the interests of a handful of land speculators ahead of the public's interest? And why, why especially, did the Green government open up the Duffins Roof Agricultural Preserve for development? This is a particularly egregious decision. The public, a previous conservative government, sold these lands far below development prices because they would be used for farming forever. That was the right decision. I believe it was right for the public to make that investment. And now we need to know why the government is betraying the public interest and what's the financial consequences to the taxpayers of the government's betrayal of that public interest. So I look forward to both the Integrity Commissioner's investigation and the Auditor General's investigation. And I want to extend a thank you to both of my fellow opposition leaders, John Frazier, and I'm leader of the Liberal Party, and Marit Stiles, incoming leader of the New Democratic Party, for working together in having a joint request to the Auditor General to conduct this investigation. Because the people of Ontario need to know that the opposition is working together to get the answers they deserve to hold this government accountable uh, for the decisions they've made. I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, so, 
but not an ex not an expert on the disciplinary powers of either of these offices, but I know it's like not a ton. Both of these mm -hmm. reports are going to be tabled in the legislature, then probably up to MPPs on what to do. Mm -hmm. PCs obviously have a massive majority. What do you think is going to happen here? You know what, I, I think you're right that the disciplinary powers of uh, either office, uh, you know, will um, have, are limited. But the court of public opinion is powerful. And the people of Ontario need to know the truth. There needs to be transparency and accountability around these land deals that do not pass the smell test. And I can guarantee you from the conversations I've had with citizens, farm organizations, environmental organizations, municipal leaders, people are going to continue to push back against these land deals because they don't pass the smell test. They're not in the public interest. They put our farmland at risk. They put the green space that cleans our drinking water and protects us from flooding at risk. And none of this is necessary, given what experts, including the government's own Housing Affordability Task Force, has stated is needed to address the housing affordability crisis. So I believe these investigations are important to shed light on these land deals. So the public, because the public has a right to know and the public has a right to respond to that information and knowledge. The AG's letter to you guys says that uh, she will be conducting certain audit work on this issue commencing within the next few weeks. The exact scope of the audit has not uh, as yet been finalized. Wondering if you have any comments on the, the scope. Thing. Yeah, I mean, obviously the scope of the work will be determined by the Auditor General, and obviously the Auditor General is not going to publicly reveal that uh, prior to release of her report. Uh, but I'm hoping that the Auditor General uh, pursues both avenues that we put forward that we believe should be under investigation. So first of all, the financial implications of how much this is costing public taxpayers uh, and the loss of what could have been land sold at development prices rather than land sold at agricultural prices with the understanding that the land would not be developed and how that is benefiting um, individual land speculators at the expense of the public. And then second is to uh, investigate the environmental implications and consequences for these decisions, especially as it relates to the fact that this is prime one and two farmland. This is some of the best farmland in North America. This land is adjacent to uh, the Rouge Urban National Park. What are the implications from a farming perspective, from the perspective of the integrity of the park, the integrity of the Greenbelt, and the protection of people who live in the region when it comes to cleaning their drinking water and, and flood risk due to the increasing frequency and severity of climate-fueled extreme weather events? And, you know, sometimes the Premier says, well, some of these things are out of the scope of the Auditor General. Well, it was this government who fired the Environment Commissioner and handed over those investigative powers to the Auditor General, and I'm hoping the Auditor General's office uh, pursues them with a full-scope investigation. Great. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you being here today uh, uh, for this important conversation. And I just want to conclude by saying that the Ontario Greens are going to continue to hold the Ford government accountable to put the public interest ahead of private interests. You know, whether it's the way in which the government's making decisions around Ontario Place to advance private interests over public interests, uh, the decisions they're making around privatizing health care, again, putting the interests of a few private, in private uh, interests ahead of the public good, or whether it's when it comes to decisions surrounding the green belt and putting the interests of a few private land speculators ahead of the public good, the Ontario Greens will continue to hold this government accountable and stand up for the public's interests. Thank you for being here today.